Hello everybody and welcome back to Guided Hacking. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install CAPE. CAPE is a malware sandbox that also allows for malware configuration and payload extraction. This is what the site looks like and you get a full web interface along with your sandbox and you get full reports on any of the runs that you do within this sandbox. So I'm going to start off by showing you how to install this. I'll be doing this installation within my within my Ubuntu VM, but you can obviously install this on your host machine because all of the actual sandbox is run in a VM. So yes, I'll be doing a bit of inception of a VM within a VM. Let's get into it. We're going to start off with my Ubuntu 22 installation and we'll start installing the CAPE software. CAPE nicely has an auto install script which we can grab from the site. It's this bash script here and we can just run it on our host machine and it'll automatically install all of the CAPE software. We're then going to run the CAPE.sh bash script with the following commands of all and with the user CAPE. This is to install the virtual machine manager as well as CAPE itself. And this is just specifying the CAPE user. So we'll go ahead and run this and I'll check back in when it's done. Okay, so my script has finished installing CAPE and I've rebooted my VM. We're now gonna go on and install KVM. The CAPE installation directions also include another bash script for you to do this. But within this bash script, you need to replace the occurrences of Woot here with real hardware patterns if you're looking to try and evade VMs and sandbox detection. I'm not gonna go ahead and do this within this video because it'll take a bit too long, but you can just replace these occurrences with random characters. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But if you are using CAPE within a production environment, then you should certainly take the time to actually replace them with real occurrences and real hardware patterns, which you can dump from your Linux installation or Windows installation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. To install the KVM, we want to run this command here with CAPE and this will install all the KVM and so on. I'll check back in when this is finished. All right, so I'm done installing KVM. I also ran this command here that'll install the virtual manager as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sudo a command that will install all of the requirements for the Python 3 libraries that is used by CAPE. To do this, we will just go into the opt CAPE directory and then run the following command. So I've run the dependencies install command, which you can see here. Uh, before doing so, I had an error and this seems to have solved it. It was just the lack of having dbus installed. So let's see if we can go through all of this installation and not get any further errors. So now that I'm done with installing all of the dependencies, I'm gonna switch over to the cape user with the following command and now that i'm the cape user i'm going to go ahead and start editing the configuration so that they match my installation okay so first i'm going to in edit the result server ip so i'm just going to do ip config here and get my ip and we can see that my ip is the following so i'm just going to copy that into the config and then we're going to edit the machinery and this is the correct machinery so we don't need to touch this then we want to edit the auxiliary um, config this will define some of the auxiliary modules that i use within cape and i'm just going to go through here and see if there are any of these that i would like to enable none of them seem like i want to enable them so we're going to go on to the next one okay that's all of the configurations that i want to edit for now we'll come back to this later on to make sure everything is functional once i've installed the guest host which is the host that will be running the malware on. So I'm going to start by installing my guest VM here. Uh, I'm just going to install it from a Windows 10 ISO. I'm going to give my virtual machine four cores with eight gigs of memory. And now we're going to go through the Windows 10 installation process. So I'll catch up with you once we install all of the software onto the guest machine. All right, after a lot of effort, I managed to get Windows 10 installed on my KVM. Um, I'd certainly not recommend anybody doing this whole installation within a Ubuntu install, do it on an actual hardware OS because it took a lot of effort. But next up, we're going to go ahead and install Python and then also install the agent as well. Um, I've allowed for internet connectivity within this KVM and I've checked that it can talk to my host VM. Um, so there's no issues there and it was all done by default. So there's nothing you'll need to do there. So I'll go ahead and do those now. All right, now that Python has been successfully installed, we're gonna go ahead and do some of the network configurations for the VM. What we really wanna be doing here is just 
turning off all of the Windows firewalls and then also disabling automatic update and so on. So first I'm just going to go into the control panel and disable the firewall. I'm also going to go ahead and turn off Windows Defender. Make sure to disable the cloud-based protection and sample submission because this is going to upload your binaries to the cloud for scanning and you don't want that if you're using TLP red or amber binaries that you don't want to be shared. Now we're going to go into services and we're going to find the Windows update and disable it. We're also going to stop the process so that it doesn't keep on running and we can just apply that and then quit out. Okay and so I found the Windows update here and I'm just going to go on properties again and disable it. Next up I want to turn off Torito because it's noisy uh, and we don't want to see that within our um, packet captures so I'm going to go ahead and disable that. Just opening a an administrator command prompt and then putting in the following command. Okay next up we're going to install the agent onto the um, VM. So I'm going to go to the Cape directory and I'm just going to host the agent with a simple Python HTTP server, which we can grab it from within our VM. And we can see that I've started an HTTP server here and I'm going on a different tab. I'm just going to quickly check my IP. So that's my IP there and I can just go into a browser and grab it. All right, here's my agent. So I'll just download that. So now that I've, in, now that I've downloaded the agent, I'm just going to move it i've renamed it pizza just so that it's not detected by any anti vms now we're going to move the script to pyw so that a window isn't open when it's run and then we'll set a task for this python script to be run when windows starts up okay so we're going to go into the task scheduler here we're going to just quickly click on create basic task we're going to just call it pizza time as the trigger i'm going to put it as when i log on uh the actual will be start a program and we'll browse to the file and we'll create that task then we'll go into the task scheduler library and we'll right click on pizza time and go on the properties of it here we're going to click on run with the highest privileges doing this you will need to run task scheduler with administrator privileges so let me do that all right now the binary will run with the highest privileges and after that we can just close out of this and move on so before we want to save the guest for it to be used i'm going to quickly just reboot the uh, vm i'm not going to do a full reboot but instead just sign out and sign back in this way it'll start the agent so i've finished installing my vm and i've created a snapshot here we're now going to go into the cape directory as the cape user and try to run cape with the following command but we see that we get an error here that says the network interface that has been configured as tor line is not available so let's go ahead and go back to editing some of our configs so that we can make sure everything is in order now that we've installed our vm so first of all i'm going to go through the routing configuration and i'm going to change the route to internet because i want my vm to have internet and I'm going to set the internet to my correct one here. And I'll just paste that back into the configuration. Looking through this, this all seems as though it's correct. I'm going to go up here because we had an issue with Tor. And I'm going to just disable it with no. I'm going to make sure everything else isn't enabled and we can save this. Now, when we run CAPE, you do need to run the router as, as sudo. So we're going to go Python 3 and we're just going to go to... And we're just going to run the router as admin. And we're going to just run the router as root with the correct user. Now that I have got Cuckoo ready to go, we're just going to change the machines within the kvm.conf and change it with the names that I put for my machine. Uh, these all seem to be correct here. I'll just leave those names as the ones they're already set as. And I'll just put in the IP, which I got from the... Um, from the virtual machine and set the architecture to the correct one. And then we can run the ape Python file and we should be good to go. Make sure to go into your KVM config and change Cuckoo one to the correct name of your machine before you exit. And we'll also change the label here to winter. It's also prompting me to change the amount of free disk space that it requires. So I'm going to change that as well. I'll change this to three. And it looks like our Cape VM is running. So let's browse to the local web host. And we're at the web interface. 
Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helped you install Cape VM. This was not a comprehensive video on all of the options and methods of installing Cape Sandbox. So if you are going to do it yourself, please read through the documentation. I recommend reading through the documentation start to finish before you go ahead and install it because it is very complicated. Also be ready to Google because the installation of this is not always as easy as I may have made it seem. There was a lot of debugging in the background, but I got it done within a couple of hours. This is including the install times. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Thank you for watching and until the next one, goodbye.